there and welcome to the special edition of In The Labs with me, Becky. Now, all this week across social media, we're celebrating women in the workshop in observance of International Women's Day. And so for this particular project, we're joined by Betrick's newest team member, and that's Neve. Hi. <laughs> so Neve, uh, what do you do at Betrick? I am part of the production team. Uh, you'll usually see me making videos just like this one. Okay, so a few weeks ago, we set Neve the challenge of creating her first project in Vetric software, and she wanted to create a laptop stand. And we've done it so that it's quite a versatile project in that you can have it as a laptop stand casually on your sofa, or you could have it on the tabletop as a way of raising your laptop so it's at eye level when you're working. It's a very involved project, um, we've got, it's, it's made out of plywood um, and you can see that we have on the tabletop itself, we've got a recessed space for your mouse mat. Uh, you've got an area where you can put your pens and bits and bobs in. We've got a track that runs across the top uh, and this allows you to pop in your phone um, or a tablet and it's got a channel in there as well that allows you to put uh, your charging cable through so that you can charge your devices. For the laptop area, so Neve wanted to add some personalisation um, and we decided that we'd carve in the, a name here. Uh, so we've got Eddie in there. Um, and as we're using plywood, you can see that we've added in a lot of visuals purely just from the cut itself. So you can see all of the stripes, the layers of the plywood coming through, which just really makes that pop. Neve wanted to bring in some musical personality here, so we created this cassette using varying depths uh, with the pocket tool path and we've inlaid clear acrylic to give that realness to the cassette and we think it looks cool. Now uh, it's a two-sided project uh, which enables us to slot the legs into the tabletop itself. So the legs are pretty much uh, basic profiles that are slotted together and then they sit inside a recess underneath the laptop tray. We've echoed the cassette design as well for the legs and added in another uh, piece of acrylic inlay just to really uh, make that stand out. So this is Neve's project and I've created this one as well. So it's a little bit different. So here I've just recarved the Vetric logo into the laptop area and we've created a series of cut through lines just for decoration and to allow for airflow. And the legs are just a simple kind of uh, rocket base style. Right, well, so let's jump into the software and take a look at how we built this. So let's take a look at uh, the file. So if you go to open an existing file and in the project folder, you're gonna have access to three different CR the files. So we're going to start by just opening up the laptop stands just to quickly take a look at some of the things, the main design. So here you can see we have uh, the main tabletops. Okay, so we're cutting both of those tops out on the same sheet. You can also see that we are in a two sided setup. If I flip, you can see the bottom side, and then here we've got the top side. So first off, I just want to focus on the cassette area. So I drew up some vectors uh, to kind of uh, create this um, cassette drawing. And what we want to do is we want to take this vector and we're going to basically copy that into a separate session because we are going to use um, the inlay toolpath we need to make sure that we're using the same vector so that the uh, software can create the correct geometry for the toolpath side of things so with that we're going to take that and then over here on the left you can see we've got a series of legs so these are the legs that are going to sit in these crosses uh, that's on the underside of our tabletops and so the idea is they're going to slot in there um, and we've got a little bit of a design here so again we're just echoing that cassette 
uh, from the cassette that we've got here and we want to kind of insert an acrylic piece for this kind of oblong shape. So we'd take this vector and this vector here and would copy them over into a new session where we could look at creating the toolpaths for the acrylic side of things um, as that's what we're going to machine first. When you're working with parts that are going to be inlaid into uh, pockets from other files it's always good to start with your male parts to begin with so to machine that first and that just enables you to have that to hand for when you test fit the pocket when you get to that stage. Okay, so we're just going to go come back to this file shortly. Um, I'm going to jump straight over into a different file. So if we just uh, go over and we'll just say file close, and we're going to open an existing file and then we'll go into the acrylic inlay file, open that up. Okay, so here is our file. We have the side pieces for the legs. And then we have the vector that you saw for the cassette. So I've got two of these. The reason why I'm cutting two is because I want to um, cut one as part of a test to ensure that we get a nice solid fit before I uh, go ahead and cut the real thing. And so I'd have another piece to pop that in there. So with those vectors, I went over into the toolpaths tab and used the inlay toolpath tool using the mail insert straight inlay. If we just double click in there, because I've already created this toolpath, we can take a look at that. Okay, so uh, the cut depth for this actually going in uh, at the full depth of the material. So that's an eighth of an inch. So we're using clear plastic or clear acrylic in this case, using a quarter inch um, down cut end mill here. I'm going to machine this in three passes. I've got tabs in here um, with a length of 375 and a thickness of a very small 0.07. So it's just enough just to hold it in place. I've uh, got um, ramps and we've got leads in this toolpath too. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and preview that. Okay, so let's just preview what that would look like and that's pretty much it. Okay, so at this stage we would go over and then we'll just save our toolpaths out. Okay, so we've got those toolpaths, let's head over to the labs. So we're going to go back to the software now and we're going to look at the setup for the plywood. Okay, so back in the software, we're just going to open an existing file from the project folder. Let's open the legs, okay? So we'll just open that up. So here I have a sheet of material. So we're going to be working with a full sheet of plywood, hence why I've just kind of laid everything out here for the legs, um, which you can see dotted all around the board. Um, we've got a vector here that represents that uh, the cassette that we want to test with the inlay going into that cassette. Um, and then we've got various um, other vectors around. So let's just kind of walk through those. So let's just go to uh, layer one to begin with. So creating the legs themselves, I wanted to go this kind of, um, kind of like a base of a rocket slot together 
kind of design so it's just basically like a trapeze shape tapers down so for the vetric tabletop stand I thought I'd just go for this kind of rocket shape and the idea is that this shape slots into this shape here okay so I'll put a link in the video on some very useful uh, slot together projects that talk a little bit more in detail about how you get parts to line up but generally uh, when we do this you take a shape and the slots should meet at the same point I like to just make them meet at a halfway point it's just generally quite easy to just um, cut slots in half but you can choose where your slot finishes but as long as they both meet at the same point so where they kind of lie pretty much on top of each other uh, it's going to it's going to work okay so uh, that's how that works so basically this slot width here should match the material thickness that you are cutting into so you will need to change the width of these slots according to whatever material it is that you are using. Now I'm using 0.7 inch plywood in this case. And so if you was to use something that was different, first off, just take out those fillets and then you can go and select your vector. You'll see we've got a width there of 0.7 and then go into set selected object size where you can just undraw the link XY option and then just alter the width here. Okay, so we're just going to leave that as that is. And so you need to add in fillets in your slots once you've created the slot to the material thickness that you are using. And you're going to want to fill it out the internal corners of these slots to enable the tool to actually cut at those corners so that you have a successful um, mate when you come to slot the two parts together. So you're going to want to use this tool, it's the fillet tool, you just simply enter in your tool radius, so I'm going to be using a quarter inch tool to cut this out, and it goes with a nice dog bone fillet. Dog bone fillets are nice because they um, are really disguised when you actually slot the two parts together, so they're, they're my favourite fillets to use. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it. So we're going to be using those for the Vetric stand, for Neve stand. Um, I would really wanted to incorporate that cassette theme and bring that um, around the design. And so, again, going with this kind of rocket shape, but what I've done is I've kind of bridged the two together as one piece, and then I've just inserted the uh, the central part of the cassette into this position here that's pretty much it and then so the idea is you'll you'll take um, two of these and so they would simply slot in over on top here and then they'd line up something like that okay so that's pretty much that and then that and then how that uh, slots in to the base is uh, pretty simple so this rectangle here represents the laptop top the top of the stand itself as if we we're looking at this side on and so you can see here we've got a height here of 0.7 um, and so the idea is we're going to have those legs slot in somewhere underneath um, and we're going to slot them in into a cross position because obviously we're going to have two parts that are going to slots together like so and it's going to form a cross and so it would take this kind of uh, shape like this uh, and then they would slot in place once we've kind of just welded those together okay so it looks something like that and then we'd also fill it out those internal corners so that they can the stands can slot in there now um i'm kind of talking about this after we've actually machined it and there's one thing that I noted uh, which I just changed and I have tweaked some of the vectors for you in your file um, should you want to go ahead and do this now what that is is just the straight flat part so I had a flat of 0.2 that um, goes in to the base of the actual laptop stand which is fine but it kind of turned out when we were kind of sanding it, it's, it was a little tricky because it's such a small value that when we were sanding it, um, 
in areas we kind of maybe had sanded too much and so it created more of a diagonal and so when we had in, when we inserted some of the legs it's a little bit wobbly because we didn't have a defined vertical to actually slot inside um, and so with that what I've done is I have included um, some extra vectors here so I've kept my original vectors just so you can see what we've done there you know from my reflection I would probably cut this again and actually make those verticals much longer just to create that more defined straight shapes that we don't end up sanding into it and it just remains straight so it should slot in a lot better than what we did for hours okay so basically what I did was I then took the legs and just nested them uh, so we've got enough legs for both of the tables um, and then here we are pretty much are ready to go into the toolpath so we've got this uh, square here so this basically represents a board that we want to cut so that we can just solely focus on the table tops when we machine those as part of a two-sided operation it's much easier for us to flip over a smaller uh, cutout than it is to flip the sheet over so I thought I'd kind of take advantage of that at this stage right so let's go ahead and take a look at the toolpaths okay so the toolpaths for this um, we've got quite a few so to start with I have a series of test cuts okay so we're just test machining the well test fitting not machining so we are cutting this out but we're, the purpose of this is that we're going to machine two of the legs take them off the bed and we want to check that they fit into each other and so by doing that it just means that we can test the fit if it's too tight or if it's too loose we know what settings to apply to all of the other legs which is very sensible to do this because it saves you ultimately time and material if you get it wrong and so what we've done here is we've got pockets so we're cutting all the way through using a quarter inch compression bit and I've got an allowance here of negative 0.0025 so we're overcutting past that vector by this amount which I'm fairly confident should give us a nice tight fit uh, but not too tight that we cannot take it apart either. Then we have the profile test so here we've just got a basic profile toolpath cutting all the way through using that same tool on the outside got some ramps and leads in there as well i've got some tabs to hold it in place and so that's pretty much that so we we'll do that and test it and see if that works if it works that's great we can then apply that to all of the other vectors so after that we're looking at creating another test area so we're pocketing the slot that we're ultimately going to pop the legs into okay so you can see we've filleted that cross out here uh, again this shape is something you're going to want to change should you be using a different thickness in your material and the way this is made up is it's just simply um, two rectangles that were crossing each other uh, and then I've kind of welded them together and then we've just filleted out all of the corners so that we can ensure that we cut through all of those corners so again you're going to want to change that according to your material thickness but the height if you're keeping the design the same it should um, you, you, you don't need to alter that okay so we're doing a pocket slot um, for the stands um, and what we're doing there is we're cutting down 0.2 of an inch using a quarter inch downward cut a spiral end mill uh, doing that in offset strategy and again we've got a sim same allowance here negative 0.0025 and then we've got the pocket for the inlay so we're using the exact same vector you have to use the exact same vector in order for this to work and with that you're going to go into the inlay toolpath this time we're using the female inlay where we're going to create a pocket and then inside of that form it will look something like this so here we're actually cutting down an eighth 
eighth of an inch so that's the same as the material thickness of the acrylic that we are using we're using the exact same tool that we used to cut the acrylic out with as well you need to make sure you're using the same tool otherwise this isn't going to work we're doing that in an offset strategy and for this allowance i'm going to make that a little bit bigger so we're going to go negative 0 0.003 Okay then, so um, we'll go ahead and test that. Um, and then once we're happy with all of the tests and they come back okay, we can then apply them to the rest of the toolpaths. See here, we've got a chamfer toolpath and in here, uh, we're going to chamfer the holes for the cassettes. That should give it a nice effect. Where we're going to have a start depth here of an eighth of an inch. It's an eighth of an inch because as part of the test for the the cassette in there, we've also done that to these areas that we've got uh, over here for the cassette. So using those vectors. So with that, we are using a 60 degree V bit and um, cutting down an eighth of an inch as well. Machining on the inside where the chamfer will slope downwards. And so that should create a really uh, nice effect. Hopefully it will reveal some of the stripes from the plywood. Right then, and so finally, we're going back to that compression tool bit, assuming everything is okay with our test. So we're gonna pocket out uh, the cassette holes uh, that we've got there, where we're gonna machine all the way through. We're going to pocket all of the slots. Um, so in here, let's just go ahead and just select all of those slots as well. They seem to have been deselected. I must have done that somehow. Okay, and then we're using that same tool, cutting all the way through. I'm going to apply that allowance that works when we come to run the test cuts. And then we've got a profile cut out as well. And so that's cutting out all of the parts here. Uh, we've got tabs in there. And again, we're using that same tool. So let's just go ahead and take a look at all of those toolpaths to see what we'll be seeing here. Okay, so maximize that, so that's pretty much it, okay? So at this stage, go ahead and machine that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna make use of this sheet here to then create the actual table top. So let's just go into another session of the software. Okay, so let's open an existing file and we'll go to the laptop stand. So here we're working with a space that matches that square that we just cut out of the sheet of plywood. It just makes it easier for us to flip this over as part of our two-sided operation. Okay, so let's just jump straight to the other side here. So you can see how I've laid this out. So we've got the leg slots in each corner of those two tabletops um, and then we also have two circles here that represent the diameter of some dowels that I've got knocking around that we're going to use in order to machine all the way through the material and into the spoil board they're placed symmetrically into this job so I know that I can just flip this over and put them back in to the dowel holes that are that are drilled not only through the material but also into the spoil board as well and I know that I'll have a correct alignment in terms of the x and y locations when we come to flip that over. So in terms of toolpaths for this side very simple we just have pocket for the leg stands which is the same as what we did on the test so assuming the test is okay we'll just duplicate those settings here and then we've got a pocket for the dowel so just machining down into the all the way through the material and a little bit into the spoil board and for both of those we are using the same uh, quarter inch um, down cut spiral t uh, end mill Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll just preview uh, all of these toolpaths. So we'll just say preview all toolpaths and that's what that will look like. So once that's done, we can then take uh, this material off the board, put the pegs back in the holes that are also drilled into the um, machine bed and then we can just relocate um, our 
material by flipping that over from left to right as per the flip direction that we've got here. So it's important that we remember that. Okay, so let's just tile our windows and we're just going to switch over to the other side. Uh, if you've not done two-sided machining before, I will link you to some useful tutorials to help you um, get uh, up to speed with that. Right then, so you can see we've got lots going on here. So let's take a look at what we've got in terms of the toolpath. So we've got the 46202 tool, so that is the quarter inch down cut tool. Uh, and we've got various toolpaths in here that I have merged them all together as part of a merged toolpath just to make it more efficient for when we come to cut that so the tool's not constantly returning back to its home position. Right then, so we've got um, the inlay toolpath that's going to be used on this vector over here. Okay, so that's for the cassette. So again, assuming everything's correct in the test, we're, we're just going to duplicate that. We've got a pocket toolpath for the mouse mat. So for the mouse mat, uh, we've measured that up and we actually, uh, Neve took a photo of that and you can see uh, that here. And so we actually used that and we kind of lined it up um, to the bitmap in order for us to get the curvature. So it's a top tip to do that. So take a photo dead on uh, directly above it as straight as you can. And then you can just bring that into the software uh, to help you draw um, around the actual photograph itself and um, it's pretty much it is pretty spot on so it's a, it's a useful top tip there so I'll just undraw that bitmap layer okay so um, and we've measured out uh, the thickness of the mouse mat and that's how much we are pocketing down so in this case point 393. Okay, we've got a pocket that's going to run across the top of each of those table stands, and that's just going to allow us to slot in um, a smartphone device or a tablet. So we've we've already measured it and that would work, so that slot in place there. We've got some pen holders um, and again we're just pocketing down by 0.4 of an inch then we've got um, the pocket clearance okay so if we double click on that you can see we're actually using two tools here to cut this out so first off we've already machined away an eighth of an inch for the the acrylic to sit on top okay and that's going to rest on top of this design and so we're going to cut um, through between all of these vectors here uh, by a further eighth of an inch and we're using this in two tools a quarter inch and an eighth so that the eighth can actually get in to the small areas for example here at the bottom and here over here and around uh, some other areas of that cassette we've got some um, pockets to cut the holes out of the cassette holes again like we did um, for the side panels uh, we've got some pockets to just kind of mark out some areas where these holes are so we're only cutting in um, 0.35 in total and then we've got another uh, cassette detail here where this time it's going to be machining at 0.225 so we're doing these all at different depths according to um, where they kind of sit within the list so we can create that kind of layered effect and so if we just take a look at these toolpaths so using the merge toolpath um, what we can do then is we can preview that so let's just say preview selected toolpath and it's just going to go ahead and create that for us and then that's what it would look like and so you can see you can go into detail all of the pockets how far down we're cutting in and that's enabling us to create this kind of 3d cassette effect which is really effective okay so that's pretty much everything that uses that tool then we move on and we're going to do the second part of the pocket um, 
where we are using the smaller tool so it's the eighth inch tool so this one matches the clearance tool here so if we go ahead and just preview that uh, we'll just to zoom in just so we can kind of see the difference here okay so you can see that quarter inch couldn't fit underneath here and so if we preview that you can see it's just able to get in there uh, and we've got a much better result there okay so next tool change we're going on to the 60 degree v bit okay so here we are applying a chamfer tool path uh, to the pen holder so it's this area here so rather than us having a straight vertical recess we're going to give that an angled nice chamfer there again it'd be nice to see the stripes come through uh, we've got the v carve text okay so if we just take a look so we've got the chamfer pen holder we've got the v carve text so that's for vetric and for neve we've got eddie in here and then we've got another chamfer toolpath that's just chamfering the holes on the um, cassette and we also have a v-carve toolpath that's just creating some detail on the cassette and so if we go ahead and just preview those we'll just maximize that and then just preview um, the selected toolpath that's going to do that for us so you can see got some nice chamfered edges in there that's going to look really nice got the detail of the v carving and the cassettes bringing that out we've also got some nice tiny details of the chamfered holes for the cassette and just just even that it's just really kind of just made it a bit more lifelike than as than if it was just a straight cut so really happy with the preview that we've got there and then finally it's all about uh, the cutout so going back to the uh, compression bit the compression bits best uh, in this example because we are using plywood so we have both the upward and downward cutting uh, sides look the cutting teeth so that we don't split or fray um, the top and bottom surfaces of the plywood by doing that so here we're going to create a cable entry that's going to run through this track area here uh, and so that's going to look something like this okay so just a straight cut uh, we've kind of made it all really long so it doesn't restrict you to where you need to charge your device so that's why it's done like that Got some profile lines for the vectric tabletop so simple lines that we're cutting all the way through it creates some airflow it just adds a little bit of decoration as well um, and then we've got the cutouts so just going to cut that out got some tabs in there to hold that in place and that's pretty much it so let's head back to the labs to see how that went so we're using a full sheet of plywood and the first thing that we're doing here is we're actually just marking out screw positions um, for us to screw the board into the machine bed so we avoid any part of the design. So the first toolpath we're running here is a test cut of the legs and what we're doing here is we're just making sure that the allowance that we've put in on the file uh, is enough that it's not too tight neither is it too loose, got a real nice snug fit there so I was happy with that and so that just meant that I could continue on with those settings for all of the other legs. So then what we're doing now is we're basically machining all of the inlay pockets. So here we're machining the inlays for the acrylic, the cassette areas to slot into. We've also got the cross there, so we're just wanting to check the fit, ensuring that it fits in place, looks good. And then going back to the acrylic, here is where we can just kind of clear that acrylic up and then we're going to use that to just test the fit into that inlay pocket and here uh, we actually found it was a little bit off so we increased that allowance, uh, so that's what's doing there um, and then going back to the acrylic we're then able to just slot that in and you can see it just fit perfectly in there so we was happy with that 
And that's the importance of doing your test cuts. So we move on to all of the other toolpaths to cut out the uh, legs along with the actual table top or the, the uh, laptop stand square so we can use that um, as a separate operation for us to flip the material over for the top and bottom surfaces of the laptop stand. So with all of the legs cut out, we're then left with the square, um, just attaching that to the spoil board and then run the first set of toolpaths that's going to cut out the dowel holes along with the crosses for us to slot the legs into. And that's all on the one side and then once we've done that we flip the material over, line it up with the dowels where we're now able to cut everything on the other side. Okay, so in terms of the project, so this is Neve's first time um, using a CNC machine. Um, so how did you find it, Neve? I had so much fun <laughs> making this project. They absolutely loved it and everything looks great. It does, doesn't it? And one of the things that we were talking about was um, how when we're machining into plywood, there's always that sense of um, you don't know what layer you're going to reveal. And it was something that I was very conscious of when machining the cassette area. Um, but it's turned out so nice, hasn't it? Like it, it even gives it that kind of uh, retro rustic kind of worn look to it. And then with the acrylic set in, it just really sets it off. So we're super pleased with that. Um, some things that I'd change, I think for the legs, um, ideally I'd like to work with thicker material um, and then for the legs have more of an insert into the underside of the table so it's kind of more stuck in just to make it a bit more solid. It's, there's only 0.2 of, of an inch of the material going in so we struggled a little bit so we'll kind of tweak that in the design uh, just to give a little bit more insert in there so it's a bit more solid. 
Um, but otherwise, I think we had a really good time, didn't we? Yeah, no, a little bit of right? <laughs> okay, so if you fancy having a go at machining your own laptop stands, the, both of these files are available from your Bean Color account. And if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then please hit the subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. So thank you so much for watching and happy making. <laughs>